Okay, for, for some of us, you know, who've been um, leading a life group or cell group, or uh, who are part of cell groups, you know, a, a lot of this, um, you know, will, will be something that you can actually um, translate into action. In the sense, you can put to practice um, in, in your own cell groups. You can, you know, do these things, especially, um, you know, uh, some of the maybe not the vision part of it, right? But if you really want the cell group to be a to be something that disciples people, then you can make that change you can make that transition right from from having just a meeting where people come listen and go to make it a, a, a cell group where people can be discipled okay so maybe you can even start something right if that is it is not there then maybe you can even start something and and that can be, um, you know, that can be something that can be really powerful. And uh, people coming to know their, you know, destiny in God, uh, discovering their plans, purposes, etc. Right. So um, then you might you, you might think, okay, my church does not have, you know, something like this in place, right? So so what can I do? Right? Um, my church does not have something like this. So, you know, with regard to, uh, you know, the, the content uh, part of it, you know, what do we discuss? What do we, um, you know, what do we have as a, as a content? Of some, what do we learn? Okay. Now you can, whatever you have learned, you know, till now from Bible college, you can continue to use that. You know, you, you can do a, maybe a study on faith. Maybe you can, uh, share some of the messages, share some of the you know the MP3s, the sermons. Um, you can you can pick and choose whatever you know series are there and say okay this you know you listen to this message and uh, let's learn together, right? Uh, it can be if if you want to do a, a book study then that also is there, right? We have a, a study on Corinthians, we have a study on Ephesians. Um, and that is also there, uh, and uh, so you can pick uh, and choose that, and and maybe it's, it can be a topic, you know, who we are in Christ. It can be about faith. It can be about uh, anything that you choose, and you can do that through the year, right, regularly, and it can be a it can be a blessing for those who are, uh, you know, just starting off a new believer, uh, and you know, you know, you can even do foundations with people, right? Foundations, maybe uh, you know, maybe there are. Uh, f uh, for a new believer, you know, getting them grounded in these things, um, so that can be uh, really good. Or if it's um, you know if it's a group which is uh, you know like people who are kind of mature believers, or uh, you know they've been they're just maturing, you know, um, then even topics like uh, you know the prophetic healing and deliverance and all these things can be um, you know can be used. Like right? so, the entire group learns together is equipped together and you can do that right um but my only, only thing is like um you know if you're going to be inviting people from your church then you need to you know uh you need to let the pastor know okay don't do anything on the side right? you know if the pastor says no you can't be inviting church people you know i don't want you to do this then don't do it right you maybe invite others friends uh, you know others who are um and don't do it as something part of the church I don't you can do it as something which is uh, uh, that you're just gathering together and learning god's word together right so so those are some things uh, that you could do right? okay so let's let's continue with where we left off um about um yeah just sorry uh, just skipped a bit yeah, about some of the things to avoid, right? We were looking at uh, pitfalls to avoid <clears throat> when you're leading us. So the last thing we looked at was you know, not to become intimidated, not to give the leadership of the life group, of the cell group to another person who might who might be more gifted, who might seem to be more experienced um, and who's maybe older, etc. cetera, um, in the faith. Well, you don't have to do that. You don't, and do not do that, right? Because 
you know, as a, as a church, as the church has appointed you as a leader, uh, the church has not appointed the other person as a leader, right? It's appointed you as a leader, which means that, uh, you know, they have supported you and encouraged you and trained you, equipped you to carry out. So, you know, you don't um, be insecure about it, right? Okay. Then the other thing that we need to see is maintain a balance between well the outward journey meaning the uh, uh, the outward looking perspective of the group and the inward looking thing you know see most of the time what happens is uh, when the typically in a cell group it it can be very inward looking okay this is what i this is what i learned this is what is happening in my life uh, you know, this is these are the challenges that I'm facing. So it's it's all about us, what I'm what we are going through, which is a very important part, right? Uh, and so we are dealing with that. Uh, maybe um, some of the things, you know, praying for that, dealing with that, overcome challenges, and you know, overcome maybe um, certain certain unique things, right? Uh, some we need a need for breakthrough, etc. So it can be very inward looking, like we are inward focused um but also we need to maintain a balance between that and uh, looking out outward looking what can we do to impact what can we do to reach out okay um now there will never come a point where we are completely you know dealt with all the personal challenges or you know completely dealt with all the issues uh and then you know some of us might have that kind of a thing okay i'll first you know finish all this and uh, let the group be come to a place where they are completely you know free of all these challenges and 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 then we will reach out and then we will look out right the thing is it has to go hand in hand and as the lord works in us as we are yielded to him submitted to him and as he works in us Maybe a work of cleansing, refining. You know, there are certain things that we should not compromise on, right? Uh, personal purity, living in holiness, uh, not compromising our walk with God, our testimony, personal testimony. You know, those are some things that, yes, we need to. Yeah, you know, we can't compromise on. We need to deal with. But there are other things that we are contending for, right? Uh, breakthroughs in our lives, and maybe finances, maybe work, maybe ministry, and, and maybe you know, family relationships, and all that. Well, all that is happening, you know, the other thing also needs to go hand, hand in hand, right? When, when God gave the commission to, uh, to the disciples to go make disciples of all nations, it wasn't to a perfect group of people who had every answer, who had everything in place. Right? Um, it was to a group of people who were filled with the Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses. Right? So that does not mean that they did not have areas in their lives that they, that still needed working, right? that still needed work, right? that still needed repair. They, they had. Right? But it was to a group of people who were filled with the Spirit and who were radical enough in their faith to pursue the Lord Jesus no matter what. Right? So it was to such a group of people that the Lord gave the commission and the mandate to go and make disciples. So, so also with us, you know, as cell group leaders and as members in a cell group, uh, we will never, you know, uh, if, if you're going to wait for a time when, you know, everything is fine, everything is uh, settled personally, and then we will reach out, then that's, you know, that's not going to happen, right? It's need to, it needs to be, it needs to go hand in hand. Right. Okay. Um, the other thing uh, that we need to see, let me just share the screen. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> the other thing that we need to... Um, uh, okay. Oh, I think I make it 100%. 
Okay, the other thing that we need to see is that, uh, you know, always let there be a, uh, you know, you, you be discerning and don't allow your family relations to, to suffer. You know, so typically what is happening, we are opening our homes for hosting, you know, in most cases, right? In most cases, uh, the scenario is, is the home is used as a venue place for the cell group meeting. So, uh, so the family is there, other members of the family are there. Now, the, well, the enemy is, may attempt to, you know, bring in sowing discord, bringing in division, um, bringing in other things in order to, to disrupt. Okay, so um, you have your guard up, right? You have your guard up and uh, do not let the fam, don't neglect the responsibility um, that come, you know, respons your responsibility towards the family, okay? Which is, which is quite important, right? Don't say that, okay, I, uh, I'm doing ministry and I'm and I'm serving God in this. We're doing an important thing. Um, therefore, you know, I can just neglect the family. No, right? Uh, family is God's design, and uh, you know, we are part of a family, and there could be certain needs in the family, and uh, so don't neglect that. Right? Uh, treat that as priority. Uh, so, family relationships, family responsibilities, all that, you know, let it go hand in hand. Okay. And also, um, while we pray for God's protection over the family, even as we open up our homes uh, as a venue for the cell group meetings, right? Uh, pray for God's protection, God's blood protection over every family member. Okay. Um, and um, lastly, I mean, there could be other things also, but uh, you know, what we've listed here is that uh, don't let it become a very you know, program-based cell group in the sense, okay, you have the same thing, um, you know, coming and doing the same thing and, uh, you know, the same activity and let it not become a routine, right? Let it have the freshness of the spirit. Let it have the freshness of the, of the spirit. Maybe, you know, one day you just wanted to have just testimonies, right? Go with it. Or maybe one day you just want to spend time in prayer, you know, interceding for the city and, and just go with the flow of the spirit, right? Have a plan. Say, okay, these are things that we need to do, but you know, let that always be submitted to the leading of the spirit, right? Let the like even in the discussions and facilitate, uh, you know, while you're facilitating, be uh, sensitive to the the leading of the Holy Spirit. Be sensitive to the direction of the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit wants to bring in to that aspect. So that will bring in a freshness. Right. So even though <clears throat> the whole discussion might happen for maybe half an hour, maybe 40 minutes, but it can be very enriching time right? because um, because of the insights that the Holy Spirit brings or puts in our hearts. And then we share that uh, being sensitive, you know, you to the leading of the spirit. Maybe, you know, one person has not been opening up at all, not been sharing at all. But then you, you, you know, you. Uh, you know, if you feel prompted and <clears throat> led to, you know, ask that or make that person or draw out that person in order to share. And then what that person shares is a blessing to the entire group, right? So things like that. So so be led by the spirit. Uh, don't let routine become a mere routine. Don't let it become a very, you know, a program-based cell group, okay? So, um so these are some things that uh, we need to avoid. Right? These are some pitfalls to avoid, some dangers to avoid while leading a cell group meeting or being a cell group leader. Okay. Um, well, you know, this comes with, uh, you know, having a cell group ministry, if, if this kind of a model of cell group ministry has certain administrative responsibilities okay so there are well we have the spiritual side okay like uh, i think we've you've studied uh church administration and so on where is there where there is the spiritual side there is also the administrative side of the ministry which when you neglect uh, affects the spiritual side of ministry 
right? So uh, the administrative side really uh, enhances, provides a structure like on which um, the spiritual ministry can go even further. Right, so, so there is an administrative side. Like, what are some of those things that they could, the church could have uh, a leader overseeing the entire cell group ministry? Okay, many names can be different titles. Names can be given, like a cell pastor, maybe associate cell pastor, a life group coordinator, cell group coordinator, and so on. Okay, the thing is that um, they could, the church could appoint someone to oversee, or it could be maybe one of the own life group leaders themselves who are, you know, who will be overseeing other life groups, okay? So what happens is that, uh, uh, so the, the who was appointed by the church, the coordinator will be in touch with the life groups, you know, maybe life group leaders, right? So if you're a cell group leader, the, the life group, cell group coordinator, cell group pastor will maybe give a call once a week to find out how things are, Right. Did the meeting happen? Did it not happen? Um, so this is the administrative side of it. Okay. So uh, to to know okay how regular has been the meeting, etc. And um, you know, and and also it can happen both ways. You know, you can as a cell group leader, you can also draw help from the you know the cell group pastor or the cell coordinator saying okay uh, you know i need help with this you know can you do this i need some resources on this can you help uh, i had these kind of questions uh, which we said we will look into but i've not been able to find some answers so can you help with that right um, so the, this is the kind of discussion and this is the kind of problems that we are having uh, with this person or with with you know this nature problem of this nature in our cell group so how can I sort that? You know, how can I help? So you can, you can always have the those kind of discussions with the cell pastor. So don't neglect that. Right. So this is the administrative side of it. Um, some some sometimes there could be a, a feedback form or a report. Right. Now we don't have to be you know uh, be uh, uh, scared of the term report. Uh, you know, it's just a simple uh, putting together of information to uh, submission of information saying, okay, this is what happened in the live group meeting. Okay, so uh, it's like a feedback form. Okay, so uh, a sample of that is there in the, uh, in, in the, in your notes, which has, okay, date of the meeting, cell leader's name, uh, what was it discussed, okay, names of the people attending, you know, so if if need be this can be used as well or it can be a simply a you know a whatsapp message saying okay these many people attended these were the people who couldn't make it and these are some prayer points these were some testimonies and and so on you know if there is nothing you know there's no okay we didn't really pray for healing or you know we didn't have a report of healing or uh, or a testimony that's fine you don't have to mention it right um Okay, baptism of the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Spirit, and so on. So it's it's uh, it gives the leader uh, a picture about what is happening. Okay, of what is happening in the in the in the cell group. Right. So some things are healthy. Maybe some things are not healthy. So so the cell group can actually cell group leader or cell group coordinator can suggest some corrective measures. Some can suggest some things to improve the cell group meetings and it will be useful right very very useful so so that's the you know the importance and for the cell group pastor or cell coordinator this is important right this kind of a feedback this kind of a report is important for the person to know uh, how the cell ministry is functioning right uh, what is happening just to uh, for them to know and also to know about challenges, how they can help, right? So this is something uh, that uh, that is the administrative side of it. And you know, like when you have people who are, um, you know, most of the cell group leaders, or, or I would say all, are are actually volunteers, right? Volunteers in the sense they they're not staff of the church; they have their own regular. 
uh, occupation, like they have their work, they maybe they might even have their own ministry, etc. And uh, and you know they are cell group leaders. They were trained, appointed by the church. Therefore, uh, yes, time is a is a constraint, uh, and so on. So mindful of all that, right? Mindful of all that, uh, but. The thing is not to neglect the administrative side of the cell group ministry. Okay, it could be a small report, it could be a small text, and they would they, they could also be uh, a meeting or a you know or a Zoom call or an online meeting of all the cell group leaders led by the pastor, right? Um, just to find out what's happening, just to pray over what's happening, and so on. So, um, so to to, it will require some amount of sacrifice, right? Uh, because uh, it this is part of your personal time, but to not neglect that, to be part of that and not disengage from that, right? So this will be helpful, useful, and uh, and then you know everything goes on smoothly, right? So this is the administrative side, which is very much required. Okay, so. How does one become a cell church? Right. See, one um, thing is that there definitely requires a change. Right? If, let's say, this ministry, cell group ministry of leadership or, or discipleship, is something that is uh, you know that you found to be effective, and you're saying, okay, I I need to now put this in my church, and I need to bring it into my church you know as a as a pastor i want to bring it in um you know as a as a senior pastor i want to you know or a, or, a, or the person who has planted the church you know i want to bring it into my church okay so if that is the case then we need to understand that it involves change okay it involves change um you know if if we are always thinking about programs meetings uh, Etc. You know where the entire church needs to come, right? Uh, everything is run on programs. Then we need to change that because a cell group or becoming a cell church would be a kind of opposite of that. Okay, or we could take an approach and say, okay, what are those important things where we would have the entire church participate, and what are the things where you know, while we have want the entire church to participate, you know, how can we bring in the cell church model, um, you know, without defeating that, you know, the entire church is meeting for certain certain programs, certain meetings. We're not entirely doing away with that, but, um, you know, so how can we have both? You know, that's those are some things that you need to think about and and plan because because um, sometimes what happens is like for the small group ministry, um, it can slip in the importance, right, of whatever the church is doing, right? Um, and that should not be so because it it's about discipleship, right? The events are important, the programs, the big ones, uh, where the entire church gathers together, you know, those those are important because there are some things that, you cannot do in a cell group that's you know that's happening in a big uh, measure big level uh, where the entire church can participate so uh, where there are some things that that do happen that way uh, but at the same time you know the discipleship aspect should not uh, should not slip in importance okay so that means it requires change in the way we are doing and uh, change to to uh, start doing things differently, okay? which means maybe you know we didn't have raising up leaders was not a part of thing at all. Maybe you know giving responsibilities to leaders um, was not something that we used to do. As a maybe you know uh, you're, you're saying okay, as a church, I, as a pastor, I was doing everything myself, and uh, you know, now maybe the change for such a church would be to raise up other leaders equip other leaders and and give them the responsibility trust them equip them uh, give them 
right? So ra this raising up leaders, training up leaders, maybe that's a change, right? So when we have many pillars, many leaders in the church, the church only becomes stronger, right? It does not become weaker. When we raise up leaders in the right way, right? So uh, which means that people are still you know, people are part of the vision they are connected they are engaged and and you you know the you raise raising up the leaders in the right way right then nobody will do something which damages the church right so because the fear of raising up leaders is that okay what if they uh, they you know once they once we give them a place of prominence when we when, when once we recognize them as leaders what if they do something uh you know against the church in the sense maybe start their own thing take people away you know all those kinds of apprehensions fears might be there right but if the leaders are raised up in the right way right with the right example uh, with the right heart right then that will you know, rarely happen because, or you know, even if you see some wrong motivations, and you know, having a place of um, to correct them in the right manner, right? so then this these things will not happen. So, so you know, it's a uh, thing that we need to uh, look at. Okay, so it it becomes a change in perspective. Okay, as a church pastor, as a leader, uh, I need to bring in some changes. Okay. Um, now here, I mean, as you go through, you see that okay, uh, there were uh, like the difference between okay, either you can make it make cell church or cell ministry the only way to function in the sense there are no programs, right? All equipping, everything happens through the cell groups, okay, which is which is possible. Um, you know, in the sense, okay, let's say you want to have a Let's say, for example, in APC, like we have a weekend school, right, uh, which is happening, I think, this this week, uh, this Saturday, a weekend school of healing and deliverance. Okay, so now, you know, if you can go all the way, saying the 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 weekend school will happen through cell groups, okay, which means every leader of uh, uh, of the cell group is equipped, right, to to conduct that workshop or weekend school okay so which means that there is a bigger reach right see not many people would come to one place but whereas in the life group in the cell group this can happen okay um, so that is one way to look at it okay i will do everything through the cell group ministry okay if it is a weekend school okay through the cell group ministry if there's a workshop uh, through the cell group ministry. Now that now that takes a lot of uh, uh, like single mindedness and focus and, and training of the leaders. Right? It's going to take time. It's a process. Right? It, it, because the leaders have to be trained right? in all these things. They have to be trained. So you know, there's a lot in, lot of investment of time and 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 the very clearly laid out process and commitment from the leaders and all that. Well, it is. Is it difficult? Yes. Uh, but is it possible? True, it is possible. Yeah, yes, it is possible. Right. So, so that is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is, okay, we have some things that are, you know, that are main programs. We will run it, where the church will, you know, come together, and we will give equal importance to cell groups as well. Okay, here are some things. The cell groups will be for discipleship. Here are some things that will be run through cell groups. Here are these things that we will run you know, as events and meetings and programs. Okay, so to make that a distinction. Okay. Um, okay. So the transition will happen, the change will happen, but it will take time. Okay. Okay, what is the essence or the main thing of a cell church? Okay, so we're going to look at a few things. Uh, what, what are those, you know, the core things, um, the essence of the life church? Of the sorry, uh, so the cell uh, cell church life group or a cell church. The first thing we see is about um, godly relationships, right? Relationships. The heart and life of the church is the cell, 
and we know that cell is a basic part of the church it is not a program it's it is life itself it's it's a lifestyle it's a way uh, church is done so it at the core of it is relationships like godly relationships godly fellowship right? that's the that's the core of it because uh, otherwise they you know this won't happen right you are learning together you're journeying together and so one needs to have a uh, strong good strong healthy relationship with others with each other right so so that's that's one thing the second thing you see is that um, participation right so everyone is participating uh well um the everyone in the church right is participating is being part of a life group so then there is you know there is effectiveness right if uh, if you know that's that's something that we need to work at over and over again okay because people would say okay i don't have time right and they they, they could be true i mean it, it, it's a very uh, you know that's a fact right because uh, maybe people are working in a bpo in the nights and there is no cell group which is having a cell meeting at that time which they can be part of so you know when when they say okay we we don't have time we can't be part of this it's inconvenient which which is a fact right because so so which means that we need to have cell groups which are convenient for these kind of people who have this kind of work hours right only then we can increase the participation of every member in the church in cell groups right getting them connected and uh, and so uh, that's the challenge that's the challenge of uh, getting people connected to cell groups okay it's like maybe time maybe work maybe distance sometimes right people are saying that in the place where i am staying um, there is no cell group in the neighborhood there is no cell group now i cannot travel 1 hour or 45 minutes one way to be part of a cell group you know it's it's difficult for me to do that regularly so if there is a cell by where i can maybe travel 4 kilometers 5 kilometers i don't mind but i cannot travel like for 45 minutes to be part of a cell group i find it like very difficult right so and also because of work timing and all that i cannot travel that way right so which is again a fact which is uh, realistic so these challenges need to be overcome maybe a cell group uh, has to be started in that neighborhood right maybe someone uh, now so all this is going to you know going to be a, a challenge right you need to find someone who is uh, uh, who is willing to be a cell group leader who's willing to be trained and once that person is trained i'm sorry once that person is trained to um to appoint that person you know in that area in that group maybe is maybe that person is willing to sacrifice you know go there and lead the cell group meeting uh, which is which is great right maybe for a season can do that till the cell group is functioning till a person from the neighborhood is appointed as a cell group leader so all these things are there um that um you know uh, Uh, people need to have a, a, a grip of you know, saying okay, and also people need to understand the, the every member of the church needs to understand that you know I'm not here just attending church, right? Uh, I'm not here just to attend church. You know what we see in Ephesians four, where um, the fivefold ministry e- exists in order to equip the church for uh, equip the saints for ministry. okay so when there is a uh, when there is a you know this equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of christ and when that happens not everybody is happy right not everybody is happy not everybody has the same perspective everybody you know people might say uh, i just want to attend the service and go right i don't want to be trained in any way i don't want to be you know, but people need to be taught in order to come to a place of understanding hey this is what god wants it's not that this church wants but this is what jesus wants right 
you love Jesus, you read his word, you worship Jesus, you know, you're sincere about coming to church and, and worshiping the Lord every Sunday. But this is what the Lord wants. This is what he, is, he has said in his word, that you as a believer, you are a disciple of the Lord, as a disciple of the Lord Jesus. He has called you to disciple others. Right? And for doing that, you need to be equipped, right? And you need to come to a place of understanding, being equipped, being trained in order to be released to do what God wants you to do. So that will involve sacrifice, that will involve investing of time. But this is what God wants. It's not a program of the church, but this is what God really wants, right? So that will, when people have that understanding, then that will increase the participation, right? <clears throat> Saying, okay, I'm going to be part of the cell group because hey, I need to grow in the word. Right? I need to be equipped. I need, I need a place where I can fellowship with others. I can learn. I can, you know, journey with others. So they, they also, I need these godly friendships and so on. So they also understand, right? So, you know, being equipped to do the work of ministry, right? So then the participation increases, right? Um, I cannot just be a church attending person, but I need to be a witnessing, a teaching, uh, a someone who's, uh, you know, using what God has given, right? So all that understanding, when there's a conviction by the Holy Spirit in their hearts, then, then there is more participation. So, which is, again, the core essence of a cell church, right? a church that is having or which is moving in this kind of a model of cell ministry. Okay, so relationships, participation. Then there is empowering. Okay, so empowering. What is it? Again, Ephesians 4 talks about equipping the saints for ministry. Now, with the equipping also comes the empowering and the authority where uh, we empower the people in order to go minister. We empower raising up the leaders and empower them so that they can, you know, they can maybe start their own cell groups and so on. So um, not just trained, but also empowered. What is the difference with the difference is you, you are, you know, maybe uh, appointed, right? And, and said, okay, you have the permission from the church, the, um, you know, the uh, uh, commissioning from the church in order to go and start a cell group and minister in a cell group and, and so on. So that, so then they are, then they are empowered as leaders not just trained as leaders, but empowered as leaders with the backing of the local church in order to be part of that vision in leading a cell group. Like, so what happens if you just train people but not give them an opportunity? They, no, they don't have any outlet, right? They're just trained, and, uh, but here there is no opportunity to, um, you know, to be uh, um, as to, to whatever they've learned uh, uh, or whatever they have received in training, to actually put into practice, right? There is no opportunity, right? So there needs to be an empowering where, say, uh, you know, where the cell leaders are trained and also empowered in order to be, uh, you know, be part of that cell church, right? Or fulfill that vision of the cell church, right? Okay, so that's something. The, then focus, a focus is on the Lord Jesus. Um, focus is on depending on the Holy Spirit, right? So that is always there. Um, outreach and multiplication, that is also a very foundational part of the uh, cell church. Networking, right? Servant leadership, um, helping one another, uh, being part of, uh, you know, uh, maybe certain cell groups can work together. So this is also something which is foundational for cell groups and uh, <clears throat> the this is very very important you know adaptable structures in the sense um you know when we have certain uh, things in place like structures in place now it needs to be flexible okay so it needs to be adaptable to the culture 
to the society, right, to the kind of challenges that people might have. Okay, uh, now let's say you know in a place like um, uh, you know I've heard this. I, I used to work for a company where some of the uh, you know colleagues they, they had branches in this company where I worked had its uh, manufacturing unit and branches in Australia, right? So it was in I think Melbourne or Sydney, Australia. So um, my boss went for a you know like a training and he was part of that. Um, you know the the group there, the co his colleagues there, and so he came back and said, you know, Friday, five o'clock, everybody leaves the office, okay? So everybody leaves the office, and uh, and that is it. Nobody does any work after five, and Saturday, Sunday, they don't take any calls. There, yeah, this is how it is, and uh, so we were comparing, you know, the work that we were doing here, where we were, we would work friday all day and sometimes the work will go up to 7 7 38 okay and saturdays also we would be working you know at least uh, half a day if not the full day sometimes uh, saturday was also considered a working day so this was the indian office uh, of the same company so you see the culture work culture was different okay so now if i were to have a cell group in australia you know, where most people have that kind of a work culture where at five o'clock they finish. Well, we could really have a cell group meeting at six o'clock or seven o'clock, right? And people would be free to come. Whereas in a place like Bangalore, India, if people were working on a Friday, it would be difficult because Friday they would still be working at six, still be working at seven, and maybe they'll finish by seven thirty eight or whatever, and then get back home late. So, when we have a cell group meeting, or you know, which is going to be starting at five o'clock or five thirty p.m. on a Friday, people will not come, and right? people will. So it needs to be adaptable, right? It needs to have an adaptable structure. Uh, so that um, people can participate, right? Right. So that so so those are some core things that we need to understand about cell groups. Okay. Um, the importance of prayer, right, is uh, it cannot be reiterated more because um, you know praying for the cell group members, praying for the pastor, maybe the cell pastor. Um, Praying for the members and the households that needs to be. So there's a lot of prayer that we can uh, we we can focus on and encourage each and every uh, cell group member right? uh, to 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 do to to pray right to be involved in. Um, so uh, for the just like any other you know ministry initiative that the whole thing is backed by prayer, initiated by prayer, and continues with prayer, right? Anointing of the Holy Spirit, protection for unity, for salvation, healings, miracles, and everything. So so it's not something that... Uh, so you're praying for the ministry also, you're praying for the cell group movement also in the church, you know, because people are involved, leaders are there, and so on. So, um, so the importance of prayer. Okay, so we, we, we'll stop here. And uh, and then next uh, next class we will look at the possibilities of cells. You know, we're going to look at different kinds of cell groups that people might have, uh, or you can have, and uh, and also you know what what else can be what else can you know people do uh, with in the cell group. So we're going to look at that uh, next next class, right? Okay, so we'll stop here. Thank you. God bless. We'll meet again next class. Thank you, Pastor. Great. Right. God bless. Bye-bye.